comfortably digest them, that we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in our Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When some were speaking about the temple, how it was adorned with beautiful stones and gifts dedicated to God, Jesus said, As for these things that you see, the days will come when not one stone will be left upon another. All will be thrown down. They asked him, Teacher, when will this be? And what will be the sign that this is about to take place? And he said, Be aware that you are not led astray. For many will come in my name and say, I am he, and the time is near. Do not go after them. When you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified. For these things must take place first. But the end will not follow immediately. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes and in various places famines and plagues. And there will be dreadful portents and great signs from heaven. But before all this occurs, they will arrest you and persecute you. They will hand you over to synagogues and prisons. And you will be brought before kings and governors because of my name. This will give you an opportunity to testify. So make up your minds not to prepare your defense in advance, for I will give you words and a wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be betrayed even by parents and brothers, by relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, but not a hair of your head will perish. By your endurance, you will gain your soul. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. with the 
leadership who returned from the Babylonian exile. You may not remember the history. The nation of Israel had been taken captive to Babylon, but some stragglers remained and some were able to return in waves at different points. The text here is quoting a speech from God to Israel as the remnant community is trying to deal with the conflict with the leaders who had returned. They're trying to put the conflict and the trauma of the Babylonian captivity and being left behind, behind them. So God encourages them. I am about to do a new thing. I am about to create new heavens and a new earth. The power of this promise comes in the second half of verse 17. The former things will not be remembered or come to mind. This is a powerful promise for those who've experienced trauma. So many of us walk around broken, torn, so caught up on the past and the trauma that they have an inability to move forward. They can't seem to break the ties that bind them to the past. God's speech to Israel that we find in these chapters of Isaiah speak to much of the trauma that Israel suffered while living under the oppression of foreign conquerors. Their children died of malnutrition on account of injustices under foreign rule, Isaiah 65, 20. Their labor was exploited to build the homes of their oppressors. They lived in a land without empathy for themselves or others. Sometimes I think that we are becoming a land without empathy. Two weeks ago, Nancy Pelosi's husband was attacked in his own home, and the ridicule that was heaped upon this man's head after the attack astounded me. It is not okay to make fun or joke about this brutality, no matter how you feel about his wife's politics. That some of the political leaders did so is not okay. May we never be characterized as a land without empathy for others. The prophet here in Isaiah is imagining what a land with empathy would look like and what we have to look forward to. He promises that after the trauma, there is healing, which is a good balance because the gospel text lends us little reprieve. Luke is narrating Jesus' description of the end of the days complete with earthquakes, famines, wars, plagues, and persecution of the faithful. This is the kind of apocalyptic literature that made the Left Behind series famous in some Christian communities. How many of y'all read that? There is money to be made in the selling of fear. In this text, the disciples with others in Jesus are standing in the temple and Jesus tells them that this grandeur that they see in this temple, that one day it would be no more. He speaks of nations and earthquakes and dreadful things. And then he speaks of persecution. It is going to get bad, Jesus is saying. In a few weeks, we will be moving from the Gospel of Luke, thank you Jesus, to the Gospel of Matthew and turn the liturgical calendar year from year C to year A. Many of us preachers will be breathing a sigh of relief as we're ready for some reprieve from Luke's apocalyptic imagery. But Advent is going to arrive with its apocalyptic punch, so you best just sit back and get ready for it. Apocalyptic end-time literature is a literature that speaks of horrific, frightening things happening at the end. And Isaiah comes in speaking words of hope about what comes after that, which is why I suspect the lectionary put them together, so that you can have a balance. I'm about to create Jerusalem as a joy and its people as a delight. No more shall the sound of weeping be heard in it or the cry of distress. Isaiah 65, 18. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox, but the serpent, its food shall be dust. They shall not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, says the Lord. Before
for this great time depicted in Isaiah, that which is spoken of in Luke, happens. We hold them both together. Things are going to get worse before they get better. But just because things are going to get worse does not mean that we have to live into it. Jesus didn't let us off the hook so that we sit around like Eeyore, expecting the worst. No matter what the couch and the candy look like on any given night, Phil. He gave us a command and some hope. Jesus tells his disciples in Luke that, quote, not a hair of your head will perish. By your endurance, you will gain your soul. We are promised, as I spoke of last week, a resurrection. Though our earthly bodies will fade and die, not a hair of your head will perish eternally. Our endurance, our faithfulness here on earth, our lives that should bear witness to Christ and what he has done for us, will gain your soul. Hell may very well break loose in the world around us. Our nation may be on the brink of some uncertain times. We may want to pull the covers up over our heads and lay low and hope that nobody notices us. But Jesus calls us to do the opposite. Endure. Jesus speaks of wars and insurrections, nation rising against nation, earthquakes, famines, and plagues. But before all of this, he warns his followers, they will arrest and persecute you. They will hand you over. But in the midst of this, he assures his followers that, quote, I will give you words and wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be hated, but you are commanded to speak. Speak. Tell the truth. Proclaim Christ crucified and risen. Amidst all the apocalyptic language we hear in Luke's gospel, Jesus is teaching us something essential about what it means to be his followers. When things get hard, when people point their pitchforks at you, when people try to silence and malign and ridicule you, keep on speaking. This is the essential vocation of the church. Stand tall. Endure. In the middle of chaos and confusion of the world, keep proclaiming who we are and what we are about over and over and over again. God is faithful even when everything around us is falling apart. And hard times may come, but we are children of the resurrection, and there are better times coming. And in the words of Isaiah, the former things shall not be remembered or come to mind. Amen. Amen.
Book of Common Prayer, page 383. Please kneel or be seated as you're ready. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, for all the baptized in their daily life and work, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our presiding bishop, Michael Gurd, and our bishop, Susan, and for Mark, our bishop-elect, for Reverend Jennifer, our rector, for the clergy and congregations of Good Shepherd, Lumont, St. Andrews, Burke, St. Peter's, Oak Grove, Colonial Beach, and for all baptized in the daily life and work, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our president, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our country of many voices, that we may turn toward the needs of the other and restore unity where opinion and circumstance have divided. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. <clears throat> for this town and county, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, we pray for Carol, Stephen, Alice, Joyce, Valerie, David, Jeremy, Jeffrey, Linda, Christine, Daphne, Eric, Greg, Richard, Kay, Nancy, Jason, David, Monica, Abby, Chris, John, Linda, Brenda, Lola, Jim, and Karen. For those in military service, especially Zachary, <coughs> Kelsey, Katie, Terry, Holly Ann, Nicholas, and John. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries this week, including Rona Barney, and Bruce and Linda Box, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and all who remember <coughs> and care for them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, especially Stephen Warner, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy that we may end our lives in faith and hope, without suffering and without reproach. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. In the communion of James and of all the saints, let us command ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To the Lord.
Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also be with you. Don't need somebody you don't know. Peace of God. Peace of God. Peace of God.
Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. <laughs> God for the people of God. 
take him in remembrance of Christ God for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. This is the table not of the church but of the Lord. It is made ready for those who love him and those who want to love him more. So come, you who have much faith and you who have little. You who have been here often and you who have not been here long. You who have tried to follow and you who have failed. Come, because it is the Lord who invites you. It is his will that those who want him should meet him here.